<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can upgrade the firmware on your HDMI cube. In case you do not know, the HDMI cube is a HDMI adapter for the Nintendo GameCube. It runs GC video and you can upgrade the firmware on it pretty easily if you're okay with a soldering iron and if you're willing to take it apart, as well as spend another few dollars on a USB programmer. Now, the good news is that this method will work on both versions of it. It will work on the regular edition and the pro edition, so it does not matter which one you use. Now, the regular edition is going to use some different screws that you'll have to open up, and on top of that, it is a tiny bit harder, and I'll show you when we open these up, but it's barely harder, so it's easy enough again to do this. And before we head into the tutorial itself, I do want to say that HDMI Cube sent me both of these products for review, the regular HDMI Cube and the HDMI Cube Pro. I was not asked to do this tutorial, but I said that I would do it because one, I want to upgrade the firmware myself, and two, this is what I do on this channel. I make tutorials, I do all that fun stuff, so I've already done a review on this product. If you're interested in the review, you can check it out down below in the description. But anyways, let's go ahead and go over to our computer and I'll show you what you'll need. So first of all, you're going to need a USB programmer like this. You need to find a USB programmer CH341A. It's going to look a little something like this, and all you're going to need to do is get the programmer, set up the drivers, now, just as a heads up, the Pro version of the HDMI cube comes with the UART or TTL or jumper or debug cables that you will need for this. If you do not have them, you will need to buy them either with a programmer or separately. I will include some links in the description. You might even have to buy another cheap programmer that comes with the cables, but either way, you should be able to pick them up somehow. They're cheap enough. Now, you can get these for varying different prices. You can get them on Amazon, eBay, or AliExpress. As you can see on here, this is actually an expensive one on eBay, $8.69 to get one within the US, or you can go onto AliExpress and get one for as little as $1.67, something like that. So it just depends on what exactly you're wanting to do, how much you want to pay for one, how long you want to wait. That's really about it. But I'm going to have links for these down below in the description. Next up, you will have to go to HD My Cubes page and you're going to have to go to the upgrade instructions and find the download links for the new new firmware updates. Now as you can see right now while I'm recording this the latest update is 2.4a so that's what we're going to be flashing. So just go to this page down below in the description and click the latest bin file to download it. On top of that it also comes with some really nice detailed instructions so I might actually be using specifically these two photos right here but if you're confused at all along the way or you need a higher definition photo I'd recommend checking out the upgrade page. Finally, I would recommend going to Lab1 Inside site. This link will be down below in the description and download the mini programmer software. You can just click download from here. It will take you to this form and then just download the RAR file from here. And once you have all of that, you should be good to go. So we can continue with the flashing. So first of all, you should have the RAR file and your firmware downloaded. Just right click and extract the RAR file and you will get a folder for the mini programmer. And I'm just gonna move my firmware into here. Now, first of all, you will need to install the driver for this. So, for example, since I'm on a 64-bit version of Windows, I just use driver setup 64. Now, I've already installed this before hooking up the USB programmer, which I highly recommend you do. But all you need to do is run this as administrator, say yes, install, Mine says driver install failure because I already installed this. Like if I hit uninstall and then I hit install, as you can see, it works. And that's about all you need to do. Now, if that one doesn't work for you, mainly if you don't have a 64-bit PC or OS running, you can run this driver software right here. This is really going to be right click, run as administrator. Yes, the same thing here. So just use this. I would recommend going with driver setup 64. If that doesn't work, use the other one. But at that point, your driver is installed. So now we need to prep the HDMI cube. The first one we're going to work on here is the HDMI cube 
Pro. So first of all, get it in front of you and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the four screws that I'm pointing at. I'm going to be using a Phillips head size one. Now carefully remove this. What you'll mainly need to do, what I do is I kind of flip this over, get the four screws out, and there's going to be a few washers on the back as well too. Make sure you get these out and make sure that these will stay in a safe place. If you lose one, it's not the end of the world, it's just you can't really screw it in properly afterwards. It will just be a little bit loose. So once you have all those pieces, move them over to the side, keep them safe, and the last thing you need to be aware of is the button right here. It will probably come out, so just be aware of that. When you do that, keep the button over to the side, and that is it. That is our HDMI cube device. We now need to prepare it to read and write the firmware. Now to the far right over here, you're going to see a JP1 point. What we need to do is we just need to solder technically those two pads together. Therefore, we will allow read and write access. So all you need to do is take your soldering iron, put it to that point for a few seconds, and run some solder there so you can join those two pads. And that is it. As you can see, that just took about half a second, if, if that. And we now have both of those pads joined together. So this chip has been completely prepared at this point to be upgraded. Now when reading this, you now have to get everything jumped and connected to the USB programmer. So if you look right here, for example, I have my USB programmer already wired up for this. Uh, I did this with the guide that they showed on the website, so I'm going to have the pictures here. Uh, but in short, what you need to know is pin 1 is here, pin 6 is down here. So that's 1 through 6 from left to right. So what I would recommend doing is when you set this up, you have your wires looking like this. Have them set up from 1 to 6. I'm not going to say the colors because the colors will probably be different on your cables, but get a note of which color is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then match them up to the programmer. So that way, as you can see, it is easy enough where they're kind of jumbled up and moved around on the programmer, but when it comes to here, all I need to do is essentially get my ducks in a row and just hook them up to the HDMI cube like so. So now that's all there is to this. Make sure you are aware of what colors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then again, just hook them up accordingly to your programmer like so. I'll have the photos showing on screen, of course. But once you do all of that, also, when you're setting it all up, you'll just have to essentially lift that up, pop the pins in, and then push down. And make sure they're not going to move around anywhere and you should be okay. So now that we have the HDMI Cube Pro completely set up and ready to flash, let's do the same thing to the regular HDMI Cube. So for the HDMI Cube, the regular one, it is the same concept. I'm actually missing one here, so this will be a fourth easier, but it's the exact same concept of what we did before, except this time you will need either a T6 screwdriver bit or a H6 screwdriver bit. I've done a H6 successfully, I'm going to be using a T6 for this. Once you get everything removed, including the button, again, just do the same thing, and it's going to be the same concept right here. Again, as you can see, we have pins one through six all showing here, except they are completely clear, they don't have a pin header attached, and we have the JP1 point at the very end. We're just going to have to hit that with a blob of solder again, so get your soldering iron ready, and and then just bridge the two points that make up that JP1. And again, that's all we needed to do. So this has now been prepared for read and write access. Now I will show you how to hook this up. This will be a tiny bit harder, but again, it's going to be the exact same process. So again, make sure you have everything wired into your programmer just fine. And here, make sure you have everything lined up one through six. And this is all you need to do. Instead of having the nice header to house all these, what you'll be doing is you're going to put these into the pin header holes directly, which you just take one of these, like pin six, for example, which I can't really see at the angle, but you just take each of these here and you put them into the hole like so, and that is it. So I'm going to do that with the rest of these five. 
Now, once you get all six of them in the holes, what I'd recommend doing is just take some pressure. It doesn't have to be anything hard. Just take a little bit of pressure when you're doing everything and push back like so. So you want to make sure all of those are still in the holes, but you want to make sure they are getting pressure. So therefore they will make the connections and they will allow you to read and write. So this is going to be a little bit harder because when we do the flashing process, you're going to have to do everything with one hand. So instead of just leaving this be, you're going to have to have one hand on the HDMI cube here, keeping everything pushed back slightly. And you're going to use your other hand to navigate to your PC. Nothing too terrible but that's about all you need to do. So now that I'm showing you how to set this up on the regular HDMI cube and the HDMI cube pro, we should be good to go at this point to begin flashing. So go ahead and go over to your PC and plug the USB programmer into a USB slot. Once you're back at your PC, again, make sure you plug in your USB programmer, make sure it is hooked up properly to your HDMI cube, and then open up CH341A, Dot exe say yes to this and now you need to set this up properly so you need to go to menu go up to mxic and select detect and it should bring this up immediately if you're getting a whole lot of 0f 0f 0 just a lot of stuff like that that means that you did not either hook this up properly or you did not successfully bridge your point again if you don't bridge that JP1 point, that means that you will not have read or write access. So first of all, what you need to do is click read up here. Now, if this is successful, you should get some data that looks something like this. You just want to get data of some kind showing on here. You can check out the rest of this if you really want to, but as you can see, this is populated with data. So now what you need to do, this is going to be a little bit nerve wracking because you are going to have to erase your chip, but click erase and that's it. Chip erasing is completed. Please check is empty. So press okay on that. Now what you need to do is read it in again. And if you get all F's right here, just zero FF's, if that's all you're getting, that means that your HDMI cube is now blank. Now what you need to do is click open and find the firmware. Locate where your .bin file is, double click this, and now click on program. When that's completed, what I recommend doing is click verify. And as you can see, it says chip and buffer same. So press OK, and for extra measure, what I like to do is exit out of this, reopen it, say yes, and then click on read. And if it reads successfully again, that means that you have successfully flashed and upgraded your chip. So now you can exit out of here, remove your USB programmer, and remove the wires from your HDMI cube. Whenever you have everything hooked back up, you are going to have to hold down the button on the HDMI cube itself and pair your remote with it again. Once you pair your remote, go down to other settings and you need to find a setting called Enhanced DVI Mode. Turn that on so that way you can play with sound again. Once that's all completed, you can change anything else you want, but go to Store Settings. So now at this point, your remote will be mapped and you'll have audio playing on your device. So we will need to get out our soldering iron one more time because it is recommended by the manufacturer to now remove the bridge from JP1. So the method I'm going to use for this is I'm just going to use some of this desoldering braid and touch it to that point while I hit it with the soldering iron and remove the solder that is from there so therefore the points will no longer be bridged. And that was it. So let's do the same thing to the HDMI Cube Pro. The 
So at this point, both of these chips have been completely upgraded. So all you need to do is now work backwards, just put this back piece back on, put these screws and washers back in there, and you should be good to go at that point. So you are done, and every time you upgrade, this is the steps that you're going to need to do. So it doesn't matter what the update is, regardless, whenever a new update comes out, if you choose to update, what you need to do is take this apart, bridge the two points at JP1, hook it up the same way, flash over your update, and then put it all back together. Another thing to note is that you should only get your updates from the official HDMI Cube website. These updates are not regular GC video updates. They are GC video updates that have been compiled specifically for the HDMI Cube. So once they are compiled, they are uploaded onto the website, and from there, you can download them and flash them to your device. But anyways, that is it. We are completely done. Done at this point. So this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If it helped you out, let me know. And if you disliked it, a dislike is fine as well too. But have fun updating your HDMI cube.